بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger. May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions. We finished verse 12 in the last session. Coming to verse 13 where Allah azza wa jal says, وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَاجًا And made therein a burning lamp. And Nasafi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, This refers to the sun, which Allah Azza wa Jal made a source of light and a source of heat. There is no doubt that the sun is one of the creations of Allah Azza wa Jal through which mankind gains a lot of benefit. As a matter of fact, some calculated, and they said, we owe the sun about a million dollars per hour for the energy it saves us during the day, for lighting the earth. Allah Azza wa Jal made it a source of light, and that is, that is the reference of lamp in the verse, and made it a source of heat and energy, and that is the reference to the word burning. It also helps in the growth of vegetation and plantations, as well as other benefits. But again, let me go a little bit scientific in this uh, session as well. The sun is one of the planets of our uh, of the solar system which is a part of the galaxy called the milky way galaxy this galaxy contains 200 to 400 billion stars and is roughly about 100,000 light years in diameter the nearest sister galaxy to us is located about two and a half million light years away. The solar system contains nine planets, controversial, but let's just take this number. Some say eight, some say nine, others say ten. And this solar system includes the, uh, the earth and the sun. And this is the comparison, or this is the, the uh, topic we want to address. The distance between the earth and the sun, it varies depending on its position in its orbit. Because the orbit is not a, uh, a circle shape, it's elliptical. But the average distance, meaning the mean distance between the earth and the sun is about 150 million kilometers, which is about 93 million miles. 
the surface temperature of the sun is 6,000 degrees Celsius. 6,000. The core, the temperature of the core of the sun varies from 15 to 20 million degrees. Are we hearing this right? When it reaches 40, we start taking off everything we have on. We start turning on the AC and cranking it to the lowest number at 40. The surface of the sun is 6,000. The core is 15 to 20 million degrees. And we saw the average distance between us and the sun. What would happen if something in the system, in this precise and perfectly created system, would go wrong? What would happen if this sun draws near, gets off track, and draws a little near to earth? Mass destruction. The first thing it would do, it would melt all the ice. North Pole, South Pole, what would happen? It will drown Earth. The level, the sea level, as scientists say, would, ri would rise seven meters higher. But it wouldn't last for long. Because it will all burn with the sun, it will go away. It will evaporate, right? And then the sun would eat up everything. It will burn everything. Are we hearing these information and thinking about them? Does it reflect the greatness of Allah in our hearts? Does it instill anything in our hearts? Does it have any impact on our hearts, on our faith, on our belief in Allah Azza wa Jal and its strength? Subhanallah, when I was preparing this, this session, I said, Subhanallah, the journey of Al-Isra and Al-Iraj, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ascended the heavens, and he saw all these magnificent signs, this beautiful creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. It is no wonder that it was a source of steadfastness for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, it should be for us Muslims. Yes, we did not ascend, but we believe. We believers believe in the unseen that is put in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. That is said by Allah Azza wa Jal in His book. And that is said by Allah Azza wa Jal through His Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe in all, of, in all of that and that belief in these unseen matters in the universe and some of them are tangible, we can see, should make the level of our faith rise higher. Whenever we read about it, we ponder upon it. Now, we heard how great and humongous the sun is and the earth is. And the universe is, and then the heaven is, and we've heard in the last session or the session before, the narration of Abu Dhar, that all of these constitute nothing. All the earth 
heavens, seven heavens constitute nothing when compared to the footstool, which constitutes nothing when compared to the throne of Allah. Now, listen up. Listen to the following narration that is reported by an Imam Muslim, by Abdullah ibn, ibn Umar, by Abdullah ibn Umar. May Allah be pleased with him. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah, the Almighty, will roll up on the day of judgment the heavens in his right hand. And he would say, I am the king. Where are the kings of the world? Where are the tyrants? Where are the kings? Where are the tyrants? I am the king. I am the king. I am the king. And as he stated in the Quran, لمن الملك اليوم لله الواحد القهار To whom does the kingdom belong today? And nothing and no one exists to reply back. So Allah the Almighty answers himself saying, It belongs to Allah the Almighty, the one, the irresistible, the all-powerful. This is the might of Allah. This is the greatness of Allah. This is the magnificence of Allah. So how dare we disobey Allah? How dare we drift from His path? How can we not maintain ourselves upon the path of Allah Azza wa Jalla. How can we not maintain ourselves? Brothers, indeed, in these signs that Allah Azza wa Jal has set in this universe, in them is a source of steadfastness. It should ignite the faith of the Muslim. It should raise it up high. It should act as a warner. Because Allah, who has such might, such ability, such power, is able with the command, Kun, be. Fayakun, and it is, and we're all destroyed. And we won't be delayed until the day of judgment. With one command from Allah, the angel of, of death will take our soul, and then we will face, we will face our fate. We will face our destiny. We will see what we had set forth at that moment. We ask Allah's, Allah's forgiveness. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to ponder us and forgive us. We ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to overlook our sins. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi.